morning. I was going to do a big good morning thing, but that was already stolen by Senator Scott. Uh, I'm, I'm really honored to be here at Opportunity Nation. I've been here before, and I'm always honored to see uh, to be here with so many leaders, but really more importantly, to be with, here with so many leaders in our communities across the country. And that is every single person in this room. Uh, you are our country's leaders today and into the future, and it's, it's a great honor to be here with you. Uh, and I want to say a special word of thanks to Monique uh, and obviously Alan Kazai, and then most importantly, Jonathan Levine, who's been a great friend uh, and is a great mover and shaker behind this effort. Uh, you know, we are here just a, a few months before the election, and, and what's great about Opportunity Nation is that it is a, it is a real moment to, to take a respite from the kind of harsh politics around us. It is an oasis of bipartisan or really even nonpartisan efforts because you know, we don't really see that much of that today. We don't see Republicans and Democrats or independents coming together to really tackle our problems, and that's why this is so important. Uh, it's a moment where people can kind of come out of their corners, uh, their partisan corners, and join together around this very simple principle of ensuring opportunity for in every single person in our country. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, what, can what can happen and what I hope will happen after the election on important things because on important issues that form the backdrop and backbone of the opportunity agenda. Because I believe November 8th is not the finish line, it is actually the starting line to make real change in our country. I'm really honored to be here at the summit and to talk about the principle of opportunity because that idea, opportunity itself, and the idea that we all have a role in expanding opportunity for other people for generations to come has been central to my own journey and really the reason why I am here today. I am the child of Indian immigrants. I was born in uh, Massachusetts, grew up in Bedford, Massachusetts. And when I was five, my father left. And my mom, who's an Indian immigrant, uh, had never, who'd never worked a day in her life, faced a very stark choice, which is she could stay in the United States or go back to India. Now. For those who know a little about India, uh, divorce isn't too common now, and it was definitely not very common in the mid-1970s. And so she faced this choice of going back to India and being stigmatized, but more importantly, having her kids stigmatized uh, for our lives. So she decided to stay in Bedford. Uh, we went on welfare. My, we were very, very lucky that someone was building housing and we could use Section 8 vouchers and we were able to stay in Bedford, a middle class town. We used Section 8 vouchers, I used free and reduced lunch, we used food stamps. But after a couple of years, we were able to move back onto, she was able to find a job and then within six years, she was able to buy her own home. Give it, give it up. So I also had a strong mom, and like Senator Scott, uh, the center of my story is my mom's perseverance. But also important is the fact that people of goodwill decided to work through politics to make change in people's lives. So that's, and I think that's also an example of what kind of bipartisanship we've seen in the past. The program I used, Section 8 Housing, or my family used, was passed by Republicans and Democrats, championed by President Ford, had bipartisan support in the Congress. And it's because of that program and others like it that I'm 
was able to go to good public schools in Bedford, Massachusetts, went to UCLA, and uh, eventually went to Yale Law School, and here before you. Because, you know, we can be cynical about politics, and anytime you turn on your cable, cable news station, I'm sure you, or hopefully you don't actually, just don't do that for the next couple of, couple of months. But, you know, politics can be a food fight, but in the end of the day, so much of what the opportunity agenda is about is about working through uh, politics and working with business leaders and working with others to actually make change in people's lives. We have done it before and we can do it again. So I'll just take a few minutes to talk about some real opportunities because I think we lose sight of the how, how close to change we can actually be. Uh, first and foremost, as we go into the, into the future, into hopefully the next Congress, the next presidency, there's really actually remarkable bipartisan support around an issue that has been polarized in the past, and that is criminal justice reform. And the connection I think we need to make to all of the issues we're talking about is the fact that the system we have today is one that really dramatically increases inequality. In fact, our mass incarceration rates are contributing to our increased poverty by 20%. Going to jail for any period of time has become a life sentence for people's jobs prospects. And that is a problem we need to solve and can solve. And there are bipartisan efforts, Republicans and Democrats leading that effort bipartisan legislation in the Senate, in, in the House, you can see real action, and hopefully soon, if not this year, next year, we can see real change. Child care and education are critical opportunities as well. Most importantly, we need to recognize that today's achievement gap in our schools is an opportunity gap. It, it is there because some kids are coming to school without the opportunities many kids have. That is a solvable problem. We know that when we invest in zero to five, make real investments, we get all that money returned back to us as a society. Seven dollars to one as a return on investment. So that is just a question of political will. As others have said this morning, the good news is we know that ideas will work and that real solutions are possible. And finally, one of the issues that I think is really important for all of us and, and at the heart of the agenda is uh, ensuring that every young person has real opportunities. We know that there are five million young, young people today that if we invested in them, if we ensured that they had opportunities to serve their communities, they'd be better off in jobs over the long term. We've done research at CAP that if you invest in national service, those folks have higher returns over their lifetime in their jobs and elsewhere, as well as giving back to their community. So that's another example of a win-win for everyone. So those are just a few of the ideas we have uh, that are around to actually ensure that we could address these problems. Now, it's hard, to, it's, hard to, it's hard to not be cynical these days, I know. Uh, I'm in a room of people who are probably the least cynical because you're spending, uh, you're spending your time every day seeing real change in people's lives. And I know that feels very divorced from the kind of food fights we have in Washington, the food fight that seems like our national presidential debate. But I think we, it's important for us, more important than ever, to try to fight through that fog of cynicism. I really think that cynicism is what holds us back, keeps us going, getting at, keeps us from trying to make change in people's lives. And if I could just say one thing to all of you, you are the people in our communities around the country who can show and demonstrate that real change is possible in people's lives 
It's possible through politics. It's also possible through what we do in our communities. It's possible through what we do with business leaders. We can solve these problems. They are solvable. We can do it. But it takes each of us making that effort, getting up every day to give of each other, give of ourselves to each other. I am here today only because people decided to try and ensure people who don't look like them, who would come generations after them, would have opportunities. And that is, that is the politics we can have again and the discourse we can have again if we all work together. Thank you very much.